ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நமக சில்ட்ரன் ஐ ஆம் ஹாப்பி டு வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் ஃபார் அவர் ஆன்லைன் டீச்சிங் அகாடமி ஏ கலைவா ஹவ் ஆர் யூ ஆல் சில்ட்ரன் ஹை ஹோப் யூ ஆர் ஆல் ஃபைன் வெல்கம் டு லெவன்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் யூ கம்ப்ளீட்டட் டென்த் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் திஸ் இயர் யூ ஹாவ் அ ஸ்பெஷலைசேஷன் physics chemistry and biology last year you studied all together combined science now you have a separate separate subject physics chemistry and biology i am going to take biology for you today the first chapter diversity of living world in 11th standard bio botany you have the first chapter chapter 1 biodiversity that means diversity of living world now i am going to discuss in detail about biodiversity and diversity of living world okay i hope you are all going to enjoy this lesson see the first one chapter outline in this chapter you have five different sub topics the first one is attributes of living organisms what is the meaning of uh, attribute children can you guess any idea have you heard this word in previous classes in 10th standard 9th standard no why attributes is nothing but characteristic features clear so attribute is nothing but character characteristic features of living organism what are all living organism if an organism can able to breathe if an organism can able to grow if an organism can able to move all these comes under living organism in this lesson we are going to study about the characteristic features of living organism and then viruses and third sub topic classification of living world how the living organisms are broadly classified what are the criteria followed by classification of living world living organism so all these comes under classification of living world and the next sub topic is bacteria you are all familiar with bacteria that is harmful bacteria as well as beneficial bacteria you studied this bacteria in 8th standard itself clear and the last one is fungi so these are all the sub topics comes under the first chapter diversity of living world clear children introduction about this lesson earth you know very well our planet earth was formed was formed some 4.6 billion years ago so if planet earth was formed some 4.6 billion years ago it is a life exist planet earth is a life exist planet only earth is a planet which is suitable for life to live okay so it is a life supporting planet very very important among the nine planet mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune pluto among this planet only earth is a life supporting planet different life different organisms different living organisms are exist in the earth so it is a life supporting planet with land forms what are the land forms mountains plateaus glaciers etc these are all the land forms so it is a life supporting planet with land forms like mountains plateaus valleys glaciers etc so life on earth life on earth exist within a complex structure called biosphere bio means living living organism so biosphere is one of the layers which surrounds the earth along with lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere so life on earth exist life means 
living organisms on earth exist along with air along with water along with the land that is called biosphere can you get my point so what is biosphere biosphere is nothing but one of the layers surrounds the earth along with the lithosphere hydrosphere and what lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere air okay so life on earth life means living organisms can present uh, can be seen life on earth exist along with this complex structure that is called biosphere can you get my point yes there exist many mysteries mysteries and wonders mysteries means unable to understand how it happens how it takes place that is called mysteries unable to understand so that is called mysteries there exist many mysteries in the earth many mysteries and wonders in the earth so uh, there exist many mysteries and wonders in the living world some are not visible at all we can able to feel so all this life is on the earth life on earth exist along with complex structure complex uh, layers that is lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere so they are they are all together called as biosphere complex structure called biosphere life can exist on this biosphere clear for example i said many mysteries and wonders which exist on the earth some may no some may not know some may feel some may not feel for example the response of sunflower you know very well sunflower is a flower a type of flower it all uh, the response of sun sunflower to the sunlight so sunflower is always a response to the sunlight the sunlight uh, produce sun produced light the plant part bend towards the sunlight it moves towards the sunlight and then another example is there the closure of leaf of venus fly trap venus fly trap is a type of plant leaf it always close when the insects touch so these are all the wonders which happens in the earth okay from this it is clear that what we clear that the wonder planet earth harbors both land forms as well as the life forms so the wonders planet earth the wonder planet earth harbor both land form as well as the life forms have you thought of dna what is dna have you heard the word dna yes very good correct dna is nothing but what nucleic acid it is very essential necessary for the transmission of transmission of heredity genetic character from the one gen from the father to the next generation from the parent to the offspring so transfer the genetic information so dna is nothing but nucleic acid it is very essential for the regulation of life dna is necessary for the regulation of life and it is made up of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and phosphorus the dna is made up of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and phosphorus thus non living and living things non living things and living things exist together all they present they exist together to make our planet unique unique means very special so in our earth all living or living things as well as the non living things living organisms and non living things exist together they combine together to form our earth unique okay to make our planet earth unique clear children according to a survey of survey made by mura m o r a a name of the scientist and its colleagues in the year 2011 the number of estimated species on earth is about 8.7 million please note it 
it is a one more question according to the survey of mora in the year 9 2011 the number of estimated species he estimated um, 8 point million species are exist on the earth okay the living world includes microbes microorganisms they cannot see through our naked eye it is very minute it can be visible only through our through the microscope so the living world includes living world is nothing but earth okay so the earth includes microbes plants animals and human beings which possesses unique and distinct characteristic features each one have their own characteristic features they are differ from one another so in the world in the living world that is earth it contains microbes plants animals and human beings which possesses unique and distinct characteristic features uh, see the attributes of living organism the first attributes first characteristic features is growth If it is a living organism means it tends to grow okay that includes microorganisms plants and animals human beings also growth is nothing but the division of cells the division of tissues the formation of organs that are all comes under growth second one is nutrition third attribute is movement fourth one is reproduction fifth one is excretion sixth one is irritability seventh one is respiration eighth one is metabolism so all these are the attributes of living organism the characteristic features of living organism if then if it is a living organism means they have all these attributes growth nutrition movement respiration excretion irritability a respiration metabolism etc so next we will discuss in detail about this each and each one attributes okay the first one is growth the first attribute of living organism growth growth is an intrinsic property of all living organism it is intrinsic property it is essential intrinsic property is nothing but essential property of all living organism it may be a microorganism or it may be a plants or it may be a animals or it may be a human beings so if it is a living organism means the first characteristic feature the attribute is growth Growth is an intrinsic property of all living organisms through which they can increase the cell size, increase the cells both in number as well as in mass. Next point, unicellular and multicellular organisms grow by cell division. What is unicellular? If an organism have contain only one cell, it is said to be unicellular. If an organism have many cell, it, may, it means multicellular. Unicellular and multicellular organisms also grow by cell division. In case of plants, growth is indefinite. There is no definition at all. Okay. So, growth is indefinite and occurs throughout the life, throughout their life. But in case of human beings or animals, 
they have some limit the growth is some limit but in case of plants the growth is uh, indefinite there is no definite at all it can grow till the lifespan living cells grow by the addition of new protoplasm within these cells therefore growth in living organism is intrinsic intrinsic as i already said that is called essential so in living cells grow by the addition of new protoplasm within the cells so the growth is intrinsic property second one is cellular architecture all living organisms are made up of cells you know very well cell is the basic structural and functional unit of all living organism if it is living organism means it is made up of cell it may be a unicellular one cell or it may be a many cells clear so all living organisms are made up of cells which may be prokaryotic or eukaryotic you already heard the word prokaryotic what is prokaryotic prokaryotic is nothing but if an organism have cell that cell do not have the well defined nucleus that means the nucleus is not in proper membrane okay so prokaryotic organism is nothing but the organisms which do not have a well defined nucleus in case of eukaryotic means well defined the cell have the well defined nucleus okay so all living organisms are made up of cells which may be prokaryotic or eukaryotic that means have a well defined nucleus or may not have well defined nucleus if it is well defined means it is called eukaryotic cell if may not have well defined nucleus means it is called prokaryotic cell clear children yes prokaryotes are unicellular most of the prokaryotic cells are present in the unicellular organisms they lack membrane bound nucleus very 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 important so prokaryotic means they lack they are absent in membrane bound nucleus nucleus is there but there is no membrane at all so they lack membrane bound nucleus and also the cell organelles each organelles have not having the membrane so not only the nucleus the other organelles also the membrane is absent so the prokaryotes are unicellular lack membrane bound nucleus and organelle like mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum golgi body and so on so all organelles are there but there is no membrane at all that is called prokaryotes examples of uh, for prokaryotes is amoeba first one is um, bacteria and second one is blue green algae so the bacteria and blue green algae these two are the examples of prokaryotic organisms okay in case of eukaryotes in eukaryotes they have well defined nucleus they have definite nucleus and membrane bound cell organelles cell organelles means mitochondria golgi apparatus and so on eukaryotes may be unicellular or multicellular so eukaryotes unicellular eukaryotes example is amoeba very important uh, one more question you know where amoeba is a unicellular organism but even though it has only one cell the cell has uh, eukaryotes that means the cell contains all the membrane bound cell organelles including nucleus very very important so amoeba is a unicellular eukaryotic organism very very important amoeba is the unicellular eukaryotic organism and a multicellular organism eudogonium so these are all comes under eukaryotes okay so unicellular organism amoeba or multicellular organism means eudogonium the next attribute is reproduction reproduction is one of the main and fundamental characteristic features of all living organism 
there are two different types of reproduction one is called asexual reproduction and another one is called sexual reproduction asexual means there is no involvement of other gender okay so asexual means production of progeny production of offspring possessing features more or less similar to that of the parent organism so once again i'm repeating asexual reproduction is uh, refers to as the formation of offspring the production of progeny it is more or less similar to that of the parent organism it possesses possessing the features more or less similar to the to those of the parents parent organism that is called asexual reproduction what is asexual only one gender only one parent give birth to young ones give birth to offspring that is called asexual types of asexual reproduction and uh, there are four main types of asexual reproduction one is called gonidia of formation second one is called budding third one is called fragmentation and fourth one is called regeneration different different organism undergoes different types of asexual reproduction for example penicillium undergoes gonidia formation yeast fungi undergoes budding spirogyra undergoes fragmentation and planaria undergoes regeneration so different different organism undergoes different different types of asexual reproduction clear next one the sexual reproduction the sexual reproduction brings about variation through recombination what is sexual reproduction fusion of male gamete and female gamete that is called sexual reproduction so what happens once the, se the sexual reproduction takes place bring it brings about variation changes in the offspring so the sexual reproduction brings about brings out variation through recombination then response to stimuli all organisms are capable of sensing their environment you are all a children sitting in your home you are having your mobile phone in your hand in kitchen your mummy preparing a nice dish dish your favorite dish you are smelling that food item what will happen suddenly you are asking mom what special today like that you are asking no that is also one of the stimuli okay like that all organisms are capable of sensing their environment and response to various physical physical chemical and biological stimuli plants also respond to stimuli i already said bending of plant parts towards the sunlight and then closure of leaves in touch me not plant touch me not plant the botanical name is mimosa puduka if you touch the plant in your finger means the suddenly it closes its leaves so closure of leaves in touch me not plants when we touch are the good examples are the two examples for the response to stimuli in plants this type of response is called irritability so irritability is also one of the attributes of living organism homeostasis homeostasis is nothing but steady state the property of self regulation and the tendency to maintain a steady state within an external environment which is liable to change is called homeostasis homeostasis the level of organization in living organism being with atom start with atom and end in biosphere they have so many different levels atom molecule etc it end in biosphere so these are the levels the levels of organization in living organism being with start from the small minute atom and end in biosphere then metabolism metabolism is nothing but the chemical reactions which takes place in the body which takes place in the 
body of living organisms including microorganism plants and animals okay so metabolism is nothing but the total sum of all the chemical reactions which takes place in a cell of living organisms is called metabolism the sum of all the chemical reactions which takes place inside the cell of all living organism is called metabolism it, the, this metabolism is broadly divided classified into two types one is called anabolism another one is called catabolism anabolism means catabolism means breakdown anabolism means step up step up okay from this small to and big step up process catabolism means breakdown process breakdown of complex structure into smaller subunits okay so anabolism means formation of complex structure from a smaller subunit that is called uh, anabolism and catabolism clear see a wonderful uh, difference between uh, anabolism and catabolism it is a very important uh, five mark question i already said anabolism is building up process building up process we are constructing a building i'm going to construct a wall means what we are do i'm um, just keep one brick and then again i'm making one brick along to the that brick so step by step i am constructing so like that building up process and catabolism is nothing but destruction breakdown breakdown of complex structure that is called a breakdown process it is called building up process anabolism the smaller molecules combine together to form a complex molecule the smaller smaller subunits combine together to form a larger complex compound that is called anabolism in case of catabolism the larger molecules are broken down into smaller subunit the larger molecules are break into smaller units chemical energy is formed and it is stored in case of catabolism stored chemical energy is utilized or released and it is used see i said anabolism is building up process anabolism is nothing but building up process that means i uh, think that it is one amino acid like that see building up process so formation of proteins from amino acids this is called anabolism or get my point now we are getting a protein structure in that so many amino acids are combined together they combine to form a protein that is called this combined structure is called a covalent bond peptide one amino acid linked with another amino acid with peptide bond to form a protein so that is called the building up process in case of catabolism as i said catabolism said break down see for example glucose you know very well glucose is a 
सिक्स कार्बन कॉम्पाउंड सो दिस ग्लूकोज इज कन्वर्टेड इंटू आर ब्रेक ऑन डाउन इंटू टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ थ्री कार्बन पाइरुविक एसिड सो सी हियर The six carbon compound is broken down into two molecules of three carbon pyruvic acid, and then this undergoes series of reactions. Finally, we are getting energy. So, breakdown of glucose into pyruvic acid. That process is called glycolysis. Lysis means breakdown. so glycolysis is a good example for catabolic reaction okay oxidation everything catabolic reaction so glycolysis is nothing but breakdown of glucose six carbon glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid so this reaction is a good example for catabolism anabolism means formation of protein from amino acid that is called anabolism so combination of anabolism and catabolism is said to be metabolism clear so see here chemical energy is formed in anabolism and stored the stored chemical energy is released and used example synthesis of protein as i said formation of protein from amino acid and then uh, in the, in case of anabolism in case of catabolism breaking down of glucose into carbon dioxide and water here they gave some other different uh, some example i said the breakdown of glucose into pyruvic acid that is glycolysis that also one of the example for catabolism clear children thank you children i hope you are all understand we will see in the next class